Welcome to Deep Rock Academy, a series of videos showing you exactly how to master your class, and not just that, but specifically carry your team when it matters the most. And hey, we've all needed to be rescued or do the rescuing in this game, and it's awesome when it happens, and it can be frustrating when it doesn't. So even though I'm starting with an engineer, the steps are the same for every class. Also, I'm doing a video for every class. So consider saving this playlist for the next video or just subscribe because it costs nothing. And you can always unsubscribe later. So this is exactly what I did and there is a lot of trial and error with this. It's literally about failing and making a change and then failing again and making another change. And sometimes that's just perk related or it's build related or maybe it's just understanding a mechanic or a movement related, you know, it's gonna be different for everybody. The challenge is really knowing what to change and that's what I'm gonna help with a little bit later. But let's get started here on the first step. I recommend going to your loadouts and using a different one and either copying your main that you use or just doing whatever you want because we're going to be making some changes and I don't want to mess up uh, what you guys already got going. So next thing we want to do is find a point extraction mission, the Aquark mission on a Hazard 5 solo. We're just going to focus on your movement, your guns, your playstyle, your build, and not as much on actually beating the mission. And just so you know, we're not trying to beat this mission. So the other thing is you're going to have to uncheck Bosco. Uh, we're not going to bring Bosco, that's going to defeat the purpose, so that when you die, you literally have to come back, make a change, and load back in. Otherwise, you're not making any changes. We're just going to focus more on your movement and survival rate. So let's get started and go right into that mission. Alright, so we're not going to use turrets. No turrets, guys. I'll explain why in a bit. Right now, you're just looking at survival time and how to extend it. Just survive as long as you can. And this is why it's going to be very different for everybody. Some people are going to already, you know, be out there for five, maybe ten minutes, you know, right off the bat. Um, some people like me here, um, 57 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the real progress is made when I realized that I was focused on the tri jaws and not my surroundings, right? And I'm pretty sure if I just ran out of that dead end I was standing in, I'd still be alive. So I load back in, I try focusing a little bit more on my movement, jumping around, watching my surroundings, and just that alone extends my lifetime. And even though it's only by another minute or even two minutes, I'm clearly doing something right because if I wasn't, I wouldn't still be alive. I think this one here was at like five, six minutes, and that, I mean, even that to me was a pretty big deal. Still not at the level of confidence to just go through that mission and not be worried, but uh, we're gonna get there. So if you've gotten to this point, you know, you can survive just by like, kind of like movement alone and paying attention to your surroundings, you know, survive longer than under a minute, talking like three to six minutes, something like that. Then you've definitely got your movement down, which you're going to need in order to do everything else. And if you're having any problems getting there, just skip ahead on my time code to the demonstration video. You're still going to have to practice, but hopefully that demonstration will help you out. We're going to start looking through your build more, but we're not going to look at the turrets at all. So it's important you're not using a turret overclock or anything like that. And the reason why we're not using turrets and we're not using Bosco either is because it gives you a false sense of security that you're not realistically going to have in these situations. So the game's going to scale the difficulty in enemies based on, you know, how many people you have in your party. If there's four of you and you have three teammates down and you're in the middle of a swarm, there is no Bosco. It is all up to you. So to train with Bosco would just make no sense at all. And we're not using turrets because we're going to incorporate it in the final step. For this next step, you're basically going to have two options. You can either forge your own path, and I'm going to show you how to do that, or you can just follow my steps and do exactly what I did with the same build. So if you want to do this your own way, it's all going to come down to trial and error. You're basically trying to extend your survival rate even further, but now through your weapons. You know, not necessarily thinking about damage. Maybe sometimes it is damage. Maybe sometimes it isn't. It's more about how many times has one point saved your life versus another point. Whether that's a perk, like heightened senses, which one makes you survive longer. It's going to force you to think a lot differently about your build. If you're having trouble reloading, maybe you need to practice with the Born Ready perk. Or maybe you have to increase the reload speed of the gun. 
These are things you just have to test out. I mean, I would fail, go back, I hit more details, I went through everything and I tried it. It can sound good, it can look good, but at the end of the day, how long can you actually survive with it? And just through that process alone, you can actually test out these builds and see how much longer you can extend your survival rate. And sometimes having all the damage in the world is useless because you're dead after 30 seconds, but you're not really gonna know unless you test it. A lot of people will test out their builds in hazard threes or fours, with or without friends, with or without Bosco. And the problem with that is, how do you know that there's weak points in your build? Meaning that if your build works on hazard five under these conditions, it's gonna work in any other setting. However, if it works in a hazard three and hazard four, that doesn't guarantee it's going to work in a hazard five or an elite deep dive. And it's because of this that sometimes you get a false sense of security false sense of confidence almost in your weapons because it works so efficiently in every other hazard four or hazard three mission you play so then you go into a harder mission and you're just like what the hell but with this method we're going to start from the top and then work our way down if it's good in hazard five it's good with everything else so good luck with that if you're struggling please keep watching because i'm going to show you every conclusion i came to and the changes that i made and why i made them and if you're stuck anywhere let me know in the comments and i will reach out to you and now for the demonstration video. This was the build that I was using on this particular run, but do keep in mind, I've done this with other builds, other overclocks and other guns. So there's a lot of room here. It just comes down to personal playstyle preference, but that's the build I was using and this is how it went down. First things first, you don't have any nitrate, you don't have much of a chance. Gonna need ammo. So I always focus on that right away. So, of course, I'm jumping constantly as I learned in my trial and error. And one of the other things I learned, platforms are the perfect range defense. So the platforms protect me from the Mactera, come in with the spinning death. I can take care of the grunt and I'm alive where in other runs I would have died without doing that. I use it again here when I'm going for Nitra because I didn't have an ammo pool. and Without that, I'm dead. So I'm not going to engage in this battle and spend more time creeping closer to a, a swarm or something when I don't have ammo. So the plasma burster bounces, most effectively used when the enemies are in a straight line and you're throwing it on the ground. As you can see here, it bounces off the wall. Luckily, it still kills them. The only reason I'm using the plasma burster instead of the lure or the proximity mine is only because you get six plasma bursters. All three grenades are extremely effective if they're used correctly. I just wanted the two extra grenades. Another trick I've learned is with your breach cutter, you can create a safe place to stand. Because the build has stun, all the melee enemies around you are gonna stop in their tracks and it's gonna give you a place to stand and focus on a more high priority target. I use this a lot and I use it for many different reasons. You can revive people with it safely, you can grab ammo safely, you can get a bunch of enemies in a choke point, or even if you're just about to die, you can shoot it, stand there, get your shield back, and recover. And now for the epic menace battle. I don't know about you guys, but most of my deaths are attributed to ranged attacks, like acid spitters, tri jaws, and the menace. These things laser you. And if they don't kill you, it's a combination of a menace with grunts or swarmers at the same time. But through trial and error, I have learned how to deal with it. I create a safe space, I get there as soon as that menace starts shooting at me, and well, it works. Once again, I've survived for minutes longer than I would have had I had not done that. And this is where understanding the finer details of your build is so important. The born ready perk and my ammo consumption, all those things take some practice. Now, I had quite the barrage from these guys because I was getting kind of like a mini swarm at the same time, but it didn't matter. I was still able to survive. Not only that, eventually kill both menaces. Oh no! So now this has to come to an end at some point. Let's find out how I died and see if it was avoidable. Getting cornered here, I use a dash to get me out of there. Dash has saved my life so many times. Shoot a life-saving breach cutter there. Focus on the Mactera. Everything's going pretty well. And then I fall into that hole. Once was fine, but I do it again, and I'm pretty sure even with my dash, that's what gets me. Yeah, 
So potentially I could have had that last even longer had I put a platform there, we'll never know. But either way, it doesn't matter because I've made it. 16 minutes, 27 seconds. If you're anywhere near there, you are ready. And honestly, congrats to anybody who has because this isn't that easy. I'd be interested to see your different times and, and different builds that you guys use. This is the final step. This is really the best part for me because when you go back into this mission and you have turrets now, you're going to be way more confident in what you can do. And though unlikely, if it doesn't for some reason make you better, you have a way to test it out now and try to find out why. You may decide to use turret whip, you may decide to use an overclock and completely change everything. I mean, my main is a arc turret. The video for that is in the description, but okay, let's recap. So if you combine these steps, that is you have your movement down, the dodging, the jumping, paying attention to your surroundings, and you combine that with a build that extends your survival time further. The next time your teammates are down and you're all on your own, surviving for one minute to revive your team really isn't that bad. All right, guys, there's one last thing. I have a feeling that there's gonna be a lot of struggle around ammo while doing this. So I'm dedicating an entire video just on ammo. And it will work for all four classes, whether solo or in a group. So if you find yourself dying from running out of ammo, keep an eye out for that video. There's so much more to jump into, but some topics deserve their own videos. Feel free to ask any questions, but that's it for me.